Folks, welcome to this segment, a uh, special segment for WKNI-TV 25 News. Uh, we have an uh, opportunity to share some information uh, to our viewers and to the viewers uh, throughout the world through the uh, electronic media as well. Today, we're going to be talking to some guests that we have in the studios about an incident that happened on January 31st in Headland, Alabama. I want to remind everybody that this is a mother's cry out for her child for justice. This has nothing to do with racism, black or white, green or purple. Those of you that know Eddie Lewis here at WKNI TV 25 know that we have no issues or bias in any way, racially, religiously, or otherwise. We want the truth here at WKNI TV 25. We've always seeked the truth, and when we find it, we don't mind bringing it to you. Sometimes it upsets some people, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it makes people happy, and sometimes it don't. Today, be prepared, because this is a high emotional uh, story that's been ongoing since the 31st of January, when a young man's life was taken, and questions are still unanswered. In our studios today, we have Pastor Kenneth Sharpton Glasgow, from Tops in Dothan, Alabama. Want to welcome you to WKNI TV 25, Pastor Glasgow. And we have John uh, Carroll, who is a reporter for the TexasVilleReporter.com. And we'll have that link up on our uh, video. Uh, people can look at it right now at the bottom and uh, go to your website. And uh, we're here to talk about an incident. I'm going to let you all kind of bring us up to speed a little bit. First, little bit about you. I just introduced you, Pastor, as Pastor Kenneth Sharpton Glasgow. Yes, sir. Can you uh, relate a little bit and bring our viewers up to speed on, on what that name means? Well, I'm Pastor uh, Kenneth Sharpton Glasgow. I'm the brother of Reverend Al Sharpton, and um, I'm the founder of the Ordinary People Society and the Prodigal Child Project. And what we do, we feed people, uh, clothe people. We do a lot of different work in helping people restore their life back together, do a lot of mentoring um, to do prevention and intervention and keeping young people from getting involved in our <coughs> criminal justice system as well. Pastor, we've uh, known you over the years now, uh, yes, several sir. years, and uh, we see that you had a jail ministry. We see that you've uh, uh, gotten involved with trying to rehabilitate uh, young men and women that have been put in through the judicial system uh, over in Houston County and, and uh, Coffee County area is where we know you from. Um, and people are going to sit there, and I, I, I got to, um, and get out of respect to our viewers. Okay. I, I use the word Sharpton, the name Sharpton. Can right. you tell us the connection there? I'm Al Sharpton's brother, biological okay. brother. We have the same father. Reverend Al Sharpton Sr. Is our, is our father. And uh, there's been uh, the past uh, few uh, months you've been out uh, doing some things there been involved in some uh, activities uh, throughout the southeast and, and getting involved in those as well. Yes. Um, and, and tell us a little bit about that. Uh, you were down in Sanford, Florida. You were over in Georgia. Yes, sir. Uh, give us a little background about what you've been doing uh, aside from what just happened with us. We want to let our viewers know how this isn't your first rodeo, let's say. Well, in 2008, we were the first ones in the country, uh, in the world, actually, that got a lawsuit to where people could actually vote in the state of Alabama, depending on their crime. If they have a crime not involving moral turpitude, they could vote while yet still in prison. They never actually lost their voting rights. Uh, so that was in 2008. 2007, we did the first uh, United States social forum uh, gathering for formerly incarcerated and convicted people called the People's Family Reunion along with Project South. And we've been doing this work since, uh, for the past 11, going on 12 years. Uh, I've been down in Sanford, as you spoke about, with the Trayvon Martin case. We got lawsuits over there in Georgia, Department of Corrections for Cruel and Unusual Punishment, uh, the Terrence Dean case, along with Miguel Jackson, Kevin Stevenson, uh, to speak on some of the cases that we're doing. Uh, we got some cases over there in Florida. We were very instrumental and the Florida ex felon voters rights with Governor Chris before the new governor came in that we're actually having to go to task with now. And well, the first uh, hate crimes advocacy uh, was done by us in West Virginia in 2006, 2007. 
and the Megan Williams case. So we've been doing a lot of different work. We got over 11 laws changed, uh, including the national law, crack versus powder, very instrumental in taking buses up there in that as well. Also, Pastor, I don't want, I'm, I'm trying to let the people know how this isn't something that just started over this one incident. That's right. Okay. Uh, you've also been instrumental in feeding the needy and, oh, yes. and uh, sphere, filling spiritual needs as well in the community. Tell us a little about your ministry. We've been, we, I named it after my mother, Mama Tina, um, and we feed people every day. I've uh, been doing it for the past 11 years, uh, since 2001 to be exact. And we feed about two to three hundred right there in Dothan, Alabama. We also have a feeding ministry that's going on in Ozark, as well as Birmingham, Montgomery, and different places, and especially Atlanta. So, uh, I mean, there's no amount of numbers we could put to you because we just feed people. So we haven't kept up with all the numbers everywhere, but we do uh, know approximately how many we've fed in Dothan since we opened Mama Tina's Mission House. The other thing that we do, we're very, very instrumental in, in doing mentoring and monitoring. We call it our M&M &M program, where we mentor and monitor children. A lot of people want to mentor. No one wants to monitor. Right. And my mother came up with a program <clears throat> that is actually her program called the Adopt a Child program, where you adopt a child and keep up with that child for the whole year and not just for Christmas. Uh, we get like 450 children. Uh, Christmas toys that would not have anything for Christmas every year and this is one of the highlights of, of our success to me because it's at that one particular time and day besides Thanksgiving just feeding people when you take the highest of highs come to the lowest of low areas in the bottom of Dothan, Alabama and the people from Bow College and the Woodlands and the other rich people would come and actually give toys to uh, children that wouldn't have none that live in low income areas. So you have the whole city come together as one. So these are some of the things that we do in ministry and all of it is ministry to us. A lot of people want to make it this, want to make it that, but it's just it's a replication of Jesus' ministry. Well, that's one of several things. And John, we're going to get to you here in a minute. And, and I, I just want to I'm, I'm, as you see what I'm doing, I'm trying to get people familiar with you yes, sir. and with honesty. All mm -hmm. right. There's mm -hmm. another thing other than ministry that you and I share. Yes, sir. And that's we're both ex-cons. Ex oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> My viewers know it, but yes. Okay, okay. Well, that, that's good to know. I did 14 years in prison. God gave me the, uh, I had an epiphany. <laughs> and God gave me the division of Love power. those epiphanies. The, the, the Ordinary People Society. <laughs> Um, and I was looking, I, everybody else studied prophets and prophet this, prophet that, and I studied Jesus. I wanted to know in them three and a half years, what did he do? And I looked at how he targeted the common people. So I got a thesaurus and I learned that you, you know, you can't call people common these days. So, but the thesaurus showed me the synonymous word of ordinary. So that's how we came up with the ordinary people society. And when it came to changing laws, and dealing with social justice issues. A lot of people say, oh, that's not ministry, that's politics. Wait a minute, Jesus said, I didn't come to change your laws. I came to fulfill your laws. So what we do at, top, at TOPS is we try to bring cohesion between law enforcement in the community. In the process of doing so, we do investigations like this we're going to talk about, and we find out that there's glitches in the system that we have to address in order to bring that cohesion and that equality and fairness across the board. Pastor, I appreciate that. And, and uh, we'll talk about my past as well with you. I thought you knew that, but- uh, No, sir, I'm glad yeah, you know that though. Yeah, yeah I, I, I done a short stint, so okay. uh, I, I wore a uh, jail uniform for a while. And, and uh, yeah, uh, not proud of our days, in, 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 but I was a good cook, the sheriff over in Butler County but, loved but, me. But you gotta look at it, look what jailhouse religion has done. Oh yeah. Most yeah. people talk against it, but here I am 12 years later still at jailhouse religion. Well, we've got a lot of ministries Sticks. in the area that uh, uh, help with uh, you know drug addictions and things like that. We got crossover ministries, which is huge over here in this area, right. uh, working with our, our people and, and making them more, you know, want to be a part of something, but first comes God, that's and right. that's 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 what this is all about. We want everybody to know our viewers that that everything that we do here at WKNI has continued to do so. It's all about God first. That's right. And and God's the truth, and that's why we stand on the truth. 
And uh, with that being said, I'd like to take a moment and introduce our second guest, yes, sir. Uh, Mr. John Carroll. Uh, I know you say, you know, your, your short, you know, surname and all this and what you do and all that, but tell us about, give us a little history about uh, Mr. Carroll over there. I mean, <laughs> there's a little bit more to you just being a reporter. <clears throat> I, yes, I know this. Uh, you know, I'm from Texasville, Alabama. That's right at the Where's south end. At? It's just at the south end of Barber County, probably, uh, you know, about 20 miles from Eufaula, 20 miles from Abbeville, right on the Henry County line. Okay. Old community. Um, been there all my life. I've moved away, you know, sometimes. I went to Auburn, um, but I have a cattle farm there in Bees. So I write part-time for the little local community newspaper. So you got beehives and... and uh, I do. I'm a commercial beekeeper. Yeah, we were talking about that off camera. I can't wait to get some of your honey because it's natural honey. It's no, no chemicals or anything in it, and uh, that's huge. We do it the same. My grandfather was a beekeeper, and I have kind of inherited some of his hives. And so I do it exactly the way he did it after trying all the new modern techniques i'm right back where i started so good old country wisdom well i'm going to ask both of you and, and uh we'll ask you know as, as we've done it in in concourse with the way we open this up today i want to make sure our audience knows uh where we really stand uh, you know we talk about ministry we talk about a reporter okay are we activists most definitely it says in the Bible, you know, um, and, and it's funny you ask that because I had a sheriff, I won't mention his name, he'll know who he is, uh, told me I had to choose to be an advocate or a preacher going into the jail. And I showed him in First John, the second chapter, first verse, it says, uh, and if we commit a sin, remember we have an advocate, which is Jesus the Christ. So I don't know of any preacher that is learned. Uh, that would not consider himself to be an advocate if he's a preacher and if he does ministry or if he's a reporter, you know. And one of the other things that we had to do was a lot of lawyers uh, are coming to the understanding in the grips that they are advocates before they're lawyers. Well, I appreciate that, Pastor. Are you an activist, John? Um, I'm, you know, more of a conservative Republican activist on those lines <laughs> uh, you know as you know pastor glasgow is way on the other side of the fence but we've well, known we, him we agree there yeah, yeah. <laughs> but i mean you know for me i guess i've known pastor glasgow maybe 10 years or more and what appeals to people like me is the work he does in the street you know we can argue about politics which we seem to do all day long but um in my mind, no one is doing the critical work he's doing with people that are left behind, cast aside. Uh, you know, he feeds the hungry and clothes the needy. So, you know, in my book, I don't, I don't care if he's socialist. I'm on board with that, and my crowd is. You know, which is the boot wearing traditional, I say redneck with another. pride type crowd. You know, I mean, he's the real deal. So that's where he and I have always had a connection. Especially with the with the you know the people that are struggling to overcome uh, alcohol and drug backgrounds, and, and that's the way I met needed. John too. I met John um, going to visit different people and trying to reach out to them, asking for donations and yep. help the the feed people. And John gave me some clothes, and, and he said, "I'm gonna give you these clothes, and I'm gonna give you this check." And I said, yeah. "You are." He didn't know me from nothing else. He yeah. said, "I want to see what you do." I said, well, why don't you come over there and see? <laughs> you know, and that it's was my opportunity <laughs> to preach. You know, I always want to grab right. opportunity. And I got him over there, and he visited the tent. And y'all know what happened, right? I just why don't you sit out and just wait a bit? And he ended up enjoying service, and he actually seen us feed people and all. And, uh, and me and him just kept in contact over the years. Uh, John is very modest. He's, he's an architect. He got a lot of degrees and all that he don't uh, speak about. Uh, but he is very, very, very helpful in a lot of different ways, even though we, we disagree on the different sides of the fence politically. Um, in a lot of ways, he would make me look at things in a different perspective than I would look at. Just like you do, Mr. Lewis. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, but we always had the connection of what's best for people. And that brings Absolutely. us to this case. Yeah. And, and that's what happened in this Hedman case with O. Patrick Humphrey. Well, now, we're gonna two men of I think you've got two men of faith from each side of the uh, spectrum, political divide, the right. color line, however you want to, however you want to describe it. But 
I think to go back to your question, all people of faith mm -hmm. have a have an obligation to be more open and speak up about social issues. The government's now, not going to do it for now us. Now, we're not talking about mixing uh, church and, and, and government. We're talking about, because I, I already go on this one. I, I, but, but see, that's <laughs> the problem, though. The problem is, you know, I can't understand for the life of me. I studied at Bethany. I studied at, at, at AP Clay, and I studied uh, on my own and, 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 and experienced a lot. And, and what my problem is, where does the divide go? Where is the divide? Because Jesus addressed all that. Yeah. I, I, I mean, like in my little community, I mean, we're up in Barber County. And it's one of the poorest, in some ways, poorest counties in the country. I mean, it's right at the top ten in any measure. On the other hand, I'd be the first to say it's one of the wealthiest counties in the state in terms of community and spirit uh, and self, you know, a long tradition of self-reliance which means the community ties in, quote-unquote, Maybear, they're real and alive there. So for people like us, uh, you know, we meet a minister feeding the hungry and clothing the, the needy. Uh, we're not really interested in what you have to say. We want to see what you can do. And that's where Pastor Glasgow and I find fertile ground, you know. Amen. And I think people of faith, have, men, of, men and women of faith have to be more I don't care what the, the national media says and what you just alluded to. I'm the other way, you know. Dr. Bentley can be very tactful if he wants, but I, I'm with him. More people of faith need to step forward and speak out. If we step on someone's toes, we still going to go have a cup of coffee with them That's and right. argue with them, and they're our brother. That's right. That's and right. all these, you know, we've got wackos on both sides of the fence, but they should not speak for men of faith. Well, the reason I brought that up is it's, it's a misnomer, okay, that the government and churches should not be brought together in the sense of where churches have a responsibility to oversee the government because this country was exactly. built, okay, this country was built on the foundation of God. It was all about uh, God is why the United States of America came about and the Mayflower and all that came over here, uh, you know, years ago and that was for freedom of religion not freedom of government. In fact, it was actually religion against government. And, and uh, that's how this country was built upon. A lot of people sit there and they use that cliche, uh, you know, uh, religion and government, you're not supposed to mix. And from behind the pulpit, yes you are, because the truth is God. And when you have the truth of the Holy Word and, and that going toward the government, then you are holding them accountable to be truthful. Exactly. Right. Morals so, and ethics. Exactly, and that's where we at with this accountability and transparency. That's exactly what Pontius Pilate did when he washed his hand and okay. said, you do it. Because he knew that by him being the government official, he could not supersede the, the chief priests in their laws. And that's what we got to get back to now. I think it's a bad misunderstanding. Well, it's, it's why he washed his hand. Well, you know, it's, <laughs> it's funny you, you go there, but... Uh, uh, I have uh, talked about that many, many times myself in, in, you know, in ministry as well as, as sharing with other people that uh, there's so many cliches that man has made to remove the, the God, I call it God process, right, right, right. okay, and let man's process take over. There's a lot of people, that's why we have 5,000 different religions yeah. in the world. Yeah. Uh, everybody wants to interpret things their own way. In this case that we're going to talk about, mm -hmm. okay, in the next segment, Okay, in this case, we're talking about where the government has let down the people. Let them down. Okay, and and this is what you're. I'm not saying this. I want to make sure everybody knows Eddie isn't saying this. We're, this is what you're coming on this show to talk right. about. Exactly. Okay, and that a mother has been let down. Yes. All right, and that I, I'll be honest with you, people. I've read the story, and we'll talk about that too, where the story has been p printed and posted at. And also, I watched a video off of your website just a little while ago. And, and, and if that video is true, which I don't, you know, I'm mm -hmm. not here to judge it, uh -huh. but I was upset. I mean, I was, uh -huh. I was, and you even saw it. I was yeah. visibly angered by what I heard on that it's video. It's disgusting. And, and it's, and this is not the way society, where, where a, a society should be or even allude to be uh, in that situation. So if what you're telling me is true, uh, and, and this video is true, and these articles are true, 
we got a bad problem. Yeah, we we do. We do. We um uh, the mother call uh for help for a schizophrenic well, son. We're gonna talk about that. Okay. okay. We're gonna take a break now. We're gonna be back. This is part one of at least part two coming up. We'll be back with that right after this. Gentlemen, thank you for coming on WKNI. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Thank you.